Hello. Welcome to Racken Labs 1030. This is how we detect terraform drift, and it is a continuation from Lab 1020 where we use terraform to build a cluster. We're going to be walking through this and showing you how to detect when cloud resources are changed outside of digital rebar. The business ROI here is that you can get improved operational control and consistency of your infrastructure through automation. If we look at where we are with this system, you can see we've completed all the steps in the bootstrapping wizard. And here, because we've actually built some things, you can see that we have data collected about different types of machines, their operating system, and activity. If I was to look at my clusters view, you'll see the lab 1020 cluster is still in existence. And if we click into here, what you'll notice is that it's brought up three different machines and they are using the Ansible uh, broker that we created in Lab 1020. It's intentional for this. This is Lab 1030, but we're building on top of what we've built in 1020. If you don't have a cluster already existing, then you should stop now and go ahead and do that. The other thing to note is if you look at our Amazon, we've looked at this cluster and we actually have the three machines created for this lab. It's important that you're able to access the machines outside of Digital Rebar to complete the instructions for this lab. And that is step one. So now that we've completed the multi-cloud uh, cluster system, we want to go ahead and start step two. We are going to remove some of the resources from this system. So I'm going back to Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and take this middle machine, lab 1020-1, and here I'm going to remove it. This is normally a, an action that we do not want to take. Uh, we want to let Digital Rebar uh, manage all of the machines that it sets up. However, it is possible and even common for systems to be changed in this way. We could also be doing things like changing the networking, changing storage, anything that uh, has drift from how the machine was configured is going to be grounds for uh, having some type of error and we want to be aware that this is a problem. So we're just waiting for the system to go ahead and terminate the machine fully. So now that the instance has been terminated, we're going to go back to Digital Rebar. Now we're ready for step four where we're going to return to the lab 1020 cluster and check for drift. We do this by simply running the blueprint cloud cluster to drift detection and we apply that blueprint. When it runs here, we're going to notice that the work order is, is operating and we can drill down into that work order and see what's happening. You'll notice it's just running the cluster provision which is running Terraform, but in this case running it in planning mode. So it's going to not try to apply changes, but actually just check for to what's going on. Here, because we have changed the cluster, it's actually recognized that there's an error. In that error, if we look at the task specifically, we can go in and see what is happening. So this is the task that's running the cluster rebuild. If we jump into our work orders, what we'll see is this is where we detect a drift. This is where we called the resource broker to do the planning. That's running a Terraform apply in plan mode. That plan mode is telling us exactly what happened and exactly what components drifted. So we have really detailed information about where the drift has occurred and what has happened. Lab step five, we actually want to go to the alerts section and notice that we've gotten an alert because the lab drift was detected. So here we can see that we have the information from the drift, and this is our Terraform run. So we can actually just look at the alert and realize that we have a problem from that drift detection. And that makes perfect sense. We want to acknowledge this alert. We are aware that it's happened, and we can come back through and recognize that this is now a drifted system. Here we want to go and say this is handy to be able to detect the drift has occurred, but we really want to be able to do this work on a routine basis. We want to check every hour or every day that the system has been drifting. To do that, we want to build a cron trigger. Building a cron trigger goes through this process. We go to triggers and we say create. We're going to create a lab 1030 trigger and choose for our trigger provider the cron trigger. This is what allows us to build a timer. You'll see it actually prompts us with the cron string. And then for our blueprint, we just want to do that same cloud cluster drift detection. So exactly the same operation, we're just doing it on a timer. And then we want to do it for all clusters. 
Now we could further refine this and choose every terraform cluster or cluster that is a certain type based on the filter. And here we can go and actually see exactly what's being filtered in. Notice no machines, only clusters, no resource brokers. Excellent. And we want to go ahead and pick how often we want this run. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're building a filter, if I pick one here, this is on the first minute of every hour. So this would be an hourly trigger. If I want a daily trigger, I would pick an hour here. So this would be on the uh, first hour, first minute of every day. And this follows normal cron trigger syntax. Once I save, I'll be able to actually edit it and I could pick the, uh, I'll show you how to pick the first and third hours, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and pick uh, some distinctive colors for this. And one thing that's important for this to work is we want all filter matches. This means that all of the machines that are clusters will be considered, not just the first one that's found matching that cluster. And the other thing I want to show you is you can see where if I were here, I could actually say I want to be on the first and uh, 13th hour of uh, every day. So uh, from that perspective, this would allow me to uh, set this for twice a day scans, which is exactly what I want to do. And then we are all set. No additional changes are needed. And I have built a trigger that will run on a regular basis. Now the challenge with build doing this is that now that I've built a cron trigger, it's only going to fire at the cron time. And so we do want to be able to test fire this trigger and, and know what is happening. For that, I would recommend following the advanced structures for this lab. And I'm going to do exactly that to give you a sense of what that would look like. So the advanced structure would have us do a lab 1030 ADV. And here, instead of a cron trigger, we are going to use an event trigger. We are going to once again look at all clusters. So same things here. And now we're going to use the UX button. And there is an advanced lab on how to do this. We're going to call this drift. And uh, that is perfectly fine. We'll do that. Give this a uh, image and an icon. That looks great. And then once again, remember to set all filter matches. This looks perfect. And if I refresh my page, what you'll see is I now have a trigger for lab 1030 advanced. And if I click this, it's going to run that same scan and ultimately generate a new uh, warning for that cluster drift. The other thing that I want to show you how to do is to build that trigger using the CLI. In this case, we can go in and remove the trigger here so I can create it in the CLI and bring up my CLI. To do this, very easy to add in this trigger. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm just creating a new trigger. You can, and we'll check for it in just a moment with the basic uh, parameters. And when I do that, you'll see here's the lab 30 trigger, and it's exactly the same different icon, of course, than I had uh, created. It's important to understand that this means that you can create triggers programmatically, manage them, turn them on and off, and enable them um, in a variety of different ways, including adding them through content packs like we do for se several of the built-in triggers. At this point, we have completed all of the exercises from Lab 1030. I invite you to follow along, try and experiment with this. The next lab in the series is Lab 1040, where we actually use a uh, inspection to find machines that are built outside of Digital Rebar and pull them into Digital Rebar. Strongly recommend you check out that lab next. Thank you.